Hi everyone, and so Heroes of the Storm has taken a major update yesterday. Not only do we have a new hero and a whole new map to play with, but we have a completely new interface. Essentially, they've completely redesigned the client, the way we interact with the game, and so on. Everything has been given a good tickle up and it's certainly starting to feel a lot more like a well-rounded beta. Now, first of all, let's discuss what they've added. Well, there's a new hero, Sylvanas Windrunner. We also have a new map. And we also have now a more filled out hero progression, as well as a personal progression for your account as well. There's now rewards all the way up to level 40, and also heroes now have rewards up to level 20. What does this mean in real terms? Well, it means more gold, which means faster progression for claiming all of those heroes, and also faster progression getting up to level 40 as well, as they're doling out some stim packs as you hit certain levels. Now, obviously, the big thing here is whenever a new hero is added, and Sylvanas Windrunner is probably one of World of Warcraft's most notable characters. As leader of the Fallen, she is essentially an undead elf. Now, her abilities are kind of interesting. She's a range specialist, so she's all about the range, but she has some options here, and a particular play style where once you manage to kind of get the hang of it is very, very powerful. Now, here's the setup I've kind of been using. What I go for is the ability to push out arrows when I have my max arrow capacity, essentially. Now, I can gain ticks every time a minion dies, I gain one, a hero dies, I gain three, up to a maximum of five. Now, if you are already full, if you have your quiver full, you can then have an option where it overflows. That means it instantly fires one of those arrows off without you having to press a button. Now, you can hammer the Q key to quickly fire off all five arrows in one burst. But if you happen to use the blade, which allows you to infect minions, doing damage to them and stunning them, now, if you time this just right in the middle of a fight, you essentially do the following. Debuff the minions, reduce their health, kill them, gain a massive stack of auto-firing arrows, which immediately pummel straight into the nearest enemy hero. You then fire off the rest of the quiver, and then if they're still alive by that point, a few more arrows and they're dead. It's as simple as that. Now, getting this playstyle to work is very high risk, but the reward is also massive as well. Her ability to jump in and out of combat as well allows setting up this kind of manoeuvre or escaping it if it goes wrong is quite easy to do. She has basically an attack power which also acts as a teleport. Later on, as you level up your hero, you can use that teleport twice with two stacks, allowing you to jump into combat and jump back out again, having executed your nuke them all move, as I'm calling it. Now, essentially, Sylvanas is a really good power character. There's a lot of risk here if you get it wrong, but there's a lot of reward. She's a character that's very easy to play, so that means that the majority of users are probably going to go with this character, but not necessarily get the full effect out of her, because she does have some very specific use cases. Like I say, if there's plenty of minions around her, other heroes do not want to go near her, I would say, personally. You know, if there's a whole stack of enemy minions that she can essentially feed off to fire out these arrows, Someone like Illidan is going to want to stay well clear of her. You're going to want to catch her when she's on her own, basically. Or when she hasn't got any minions near her she can feed off. She's too powerful, essentially, to take on one and one if surrounded by minions she can feed off to build up those arrows. Now the new map they've added adds an interesting new playstyle, but not necessarily a big twist on the playstyles that we already have here. It plays a little bit like Booty Bay. In the sense, essence, what we have to do here is kill the enemy creeps, the minions, and in doing so, pick up gems. Turn those gems in to unleash a spider minion. Now, those spider minions will operate down three lanes and lock your 
opponents out from being able to call in their spider minions. It's a fairly straightforward one. We've seen this playstyle plenty of times before in other games, but here it's actually executed quite well. As with picking up the coins on Booty Bay, you have to carry those gems around with you until you can turn them in. If you happen to die, then those gems potentially could become claimed by the enemy team, thus swinging things in their favour. And that does create a good risk reward scenario here where you're going to have to kind of take and control some of the ground around those turning points to make sure that, for instance, you don't get ganked making sure you always have one hero effectively guarding, giving you a little bit of extra sight around that point can make the big difference on this map. Overall, I really like the direction Heroes of the Storm is taking. There's an awful lot of good content here being pumped out on a really regular basis. The new heroes they're adding are fun to play and complement the other heroes really well, whilst adding in new play styles, which keep things fresh and interesting. The one thing I will always say with Heroes of the Storm is there's a wide range of different archetypes here within these hero classes and the kind of meta play for each hero is different. It's really nice, there's no cookie cutter heroes here particularly. Yeah.